when faith is being tested. Matthew 26, Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 73 to 75. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou, art, uh, thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crowed. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. The scenario here is Jesus, he's been taken out to the high priest. And uh, they are looking at every possible way to bring an end to this man's message. The motive was to bring Jesus to an end. And here it is, Jesus is going to be judged, and Peter is falling closely by. Peter is behind falling closely by. But there are some other individuals who recognize Peter and they begin to ask, is not this a follower of Jesus Christ? At least I saw this man with him. He, he was with him. He, he was a close associate with him. And the Bible said that, that Peter denied it. More than one occasion. Three times. I mean, thank God so hard that Peter began to use the fisherman language. And he cursed, must be everybody in the place, denying that he was a follower of Jesus Christ. You see, sometimes when your faith is being tested, and this is what has taken place, Peter's faith was being tested here. Sometimes when your faith is being tested, you can be pushed so close to the breaking point that you forget everything. In other words, what happened or took place here, fear gripped Peter's heart. Jelly beloved, our faith will be tested. Once we are in this earthly suit, every one of us will have that event in our lives. Our faith will come to a place where it will be tested. And if your faith has not been tested, as I said, just live long enough. And you'll recognize that your faith will come under examination. It will be tested. And we have to understand that the devil will do his utmost best to ensure that what we believe, he will test us to see what we believe, if we really believe it. Just go back to the book of Job. And it has nothing to do with righteousness or how you live it. When you look at the life of Job, there was none righteous like him. And Job's faith was tested whereby almost everything, the man was brought to zero, but God allowed it. Sometimes God will permit our faith to be tested, to prove something. That is what he did with Job, you know. He said, have you considered my servant Job? In other words, despite what he is going through, I know that Job will stand the test of the times. Sometimes God allow your faith to be tested, dearly beloved. And this is where you have to know what do you do when your faith is being tested. 1 Peter 1, 7. Look what it said there. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Though it be tried with what? Fire. Your faith can be tried with fire. In other words, that testing could be so uh, impacting upon you, so demanded, it's like fire coming towards you. He said, though it be tried with fire, might be found, in other words, you may be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ. James 1, verse 2 and 3. My brethren, 
count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith will get patience. The Bible is telling us that our faith will be tried. None of us, none of us, uh, we are surrounded with, with a shield or a hedge that God will not allow our faith to be tested or the enemy will not come in and try our faith. The Bible tells us, my brethren, count it all joy. Wait a minute. The Bible is telling us, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that this, that the trying of your faith work at patient. In other words, when our faith is being tried, the author writes in James, it says, we ought to what? Count it all joy. Can you imagine that? I'm going through a rough time. I'm going through a tough time. It's as if I'm barely able to keep my head above the water. But James in writing is telling me what? Count it all joy. In other words, what James is saying, have the right attitude. When your faith is being tested, Isaiah 48, 10 tells us, Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. You say, Behold, I have refined you, but I've done what? Refined you, but I've tested you. But look what you have tested us in. The furnace of affliction. You see, sometimes, beloved, I want you to understand this. God allows us to go through something for a reason. He allows us. And while that thing may be negative, you have to try your utmost best to draw from that thing what it is God is saying to me or what it is God is showing me. You see, sometimes it is in the midst of your affliction, in the midst of your, your trials and what you are going through. You learn so much concerning God. It will amaze you. Do not see your affliction or the trying of your faith as, any, as God trying to, to destroy you or you being unrighteous. No, sometimes God in making us, bringing us to that place where he wants us to be, allows certain things to take place in our lives. But you must understand, God is still in control and he knows exactly when to stop it. Does an athlete who wants to excel, sit back and just excel? No. He exercises. He goes beyond the norm, in other words, because he wants to do what? Excel as an athlete. The very same way, if we are going to flex our faith muscles, our faith must be put to the test. How are you going to develop but in putting your faith to the test, God is not going to destroy you. In order to get those faith muscles, God sometimes allow you to go through certain things that you will recognize that you are strong and he, your, your faith is strong in him. We are living in some perilous time, beloved. The things that are happening around us in our generation is enough to scare us. We had, uh, the, we, it's, we are still in it, the pandemic. And now we are hearing about a threat of a world war. None of us know what a world war is all about. And that is why it's important that we, we pray about this situation. We pray a world war is destructive all around. I've heard stories of men and women who, who passed through the, the, the world war, who have passed through different pandemics, and, and their stories are not bright. We are living in a day and age that if you're not strong as a believer, it can cause you to faint. That is the time that we are living in presently, and we must be aware of this. Things are happening around us that we never expected probably to see in our lifetime. 
But they are happening. And as I said before, it's signs, the signs of, of the time. They are being fulfilled right before us. Our faith, dearly beloved, is being tested. But what do you do? And that's the question I want to answer this morning. What do you do when your faith as a believer is being tested? Number one, stand strong on the promises of God. The first thing, when your faith is being tested, you need to know what it is to stand strong on the promises of God. The foundation, I have a statement here, the foundation of our faith and belief is all outlined in God's word. God responds when the believer obey and practice his word. The foundation of our faith and belief is outlined in the word of God. And God responds when the believer practice and obey his word. The first thing you do is stand strong on the promises of God. Folk, one of the things that can happen to us as a believer when our faith is tested is that we can forget all the sermons preached and all the scriptures shared. We can, you know. One of the things that can happen to us, we forget the very same Bible that we have heard a million and one message. We forget what the word of God is saying. It can happen to us. I have seen in my own life strong individuals, strong preachers, they believe God's word, but when their faith was put to the test, all that they believed in, they simply went out the window. That can happen. In other words, they panic when their faith was put to the test. And that is a device of the enemy. When your faith is being tested to cause you to begin to panic, to begin to become anxious. Oh, what I will do? Look what is happening. But you know God's word. But you know what? You forgot the promises of God. The things that you hold dear to your heart. The things that you confess. You forgot the promises of God. So when your faith is tested, first, dearly beloved, stand firm on the promises of God. It is all outlined here. Look what Psalm 89.34 declares. Psalm 89.34. My covenant... Will I not break? Nor alter the things that have gone out of what? My lips. God is speaking to uh, his prophet. He said what? My covenant. My covenant. I will not break. Nor alter, change the things that have gone out of my lips. I thank God God is who he is. How many of you have had promises made to you by men and because of situations and circumstances, they change? I believe every one of us may have had that experience in our life. Men make promises, women make promises, and because of, of circumstances and situations, and not only that, because you disagree, on some issue, suddenly the promise changed. But I'm here to tell you, dear, dearly beloved, God is not like that. He is not like that. Psalm 89, 34 said, My covenant will I not break. Let me use a simple example for you here. When the rain is falling, and when there is the sun and the, the rain together, what do you see in the sky? You see a bow. That bow you see in the sky represents a covenant. It represents a covenant that God made thousands of years ago. That bow you see in the sky. The scientists have all the philosophies that the reason why the bow is there is because A, B, C, D... But you have to understand, that bow in the sky was a covenant God made. 
that he will not destroy the world or the earth with water anymore. So when you see that bow, it's a, a God is saying, I'm just reminding you of that covenant. And that's the covenant ha, that he passed down thousand years ago. So when you see that bow in the sky, it's God saying, I will not destroy the earth with a flood anymore. And that is something happened thousand years ago. Dearly beloved, God is faithful to his word. If God said it, you can go to sleep and God will fulfill it. Look what Deuteronomy 7, 9 tells us. Chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, thy faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generation, O oh Lord. This, this, is, this is God speaking to us even in today's world. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is a God that is what? Faithful. Your God is a faithful God. Which keepeth covenant, that which he declares, that which he promises. And mercy with them that who love him. You love God? That's, that's who he's speaking about. Mercy with them that love him and keep it in commandments to a thousand generations. That is the, the faithfulness of God. So when your faith is being tested, understand that you are serving God, a God who is faithful and who keeps covenant. And those covenant belongs to you, dearly beloved. Despite what you may be going through, despite what you may be seeing around you, I want you to understand when your, your faith is being tested, you are serving a living God who keepeth covenant. He's a God who is faithful and he's faithful to you. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. You may be going through a trying time now. I'm speaking to some individuals. You may be going through a trying time now. Let me encourage you. Don't give up. Don't give up. You stay inside there. The Bible said after you have done all, stand. In other words, you have done all in your physical capability. The Bible tells us, take a stand. Stand. See God come true for you because he's a faithful God who keep it what? Covenant. So when your faith is being tested, understand that you must stand on the promises of God. God is faithful. The second thing, when your faith is being tested, what I would like to share with you, you become more intimate with God. Reflecting on your past faith action. You become more intimate with God. Reflecting on your faith action, past experiences. You see, there is a possibility when you are put in the fire, when you are going through a tough and a rough time in life, and it seems as if life is just just living an ordinary day. And it's like you're achieving nothing. You are just there, getting up in the morning, and there's no zeal or enthusiasm. Somehow, the, 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 the wind beneath your sail was taken away. I want you to understand something, dearly beloved. When you are going through that, do not allow that to cause you you slack your riding when it comes to your relationship with God. You see, your try, the trying of your faith can bring you to that point whereby your relationship with God can be broken. You need to be very careful with that. A matter of fact, when you are going through a tough time and your faith has been tested, you need to be drawn even closer to God. But sometimes the reverse happens. The enemy, he gets us to reflect more on the problem 
than the answer or who has the answer. Let me say that again. When you are, your faith has been tested and you're going through a rough time, the enemy sometimes get us to reflect more on the problem than the answer. I want to tell you something. It happens to me too. It happens to the best of us. Sometimes we are okay and our face has been tested and we get through. But there are sometimes some things we go through. Brother, water becomes more than flour. In other words, the pressure is so intense and so strong that the enemy would have us reflecting more on the problem than seeking God for the answer. So when your faith is being tested, do not allow yourself to be drawn away from God, but then use it as an opportunity to be drawn even closer to God. And it can happen. Listen to me carefully. I have known people who because of what they are going through, their faith got crippled, whereby they simply give up on God. I've known people like that. You see, in their eyes, they did not expect their faith to be tested. And when the test came, they blamed God. And they said, but if God did if God cared, why he didn't intervene? Or if God um, cared, why didn't he do so and so and so and so? And they expected God to function or operate the way they want him to operate. Let me say this. Listen carefully. God will not always do things the way you expect it to be done. And if you're not careful, you can be deceived by that. Because sometimes we pray for something and we expect or we outline how God ought to function in the situation. But God is sovereign. God is not a puppet that you can manipulate and, and tell him what to do, how to do, and when to do. No, sir. God is suffering. You see, God sees into the future. And sometimes the way he operates or do things in the present... It's because he sees into the future, he recognized if he may have done it your way, he could have lost you or something more detrimental could have happened. So he functioned in a way that he could preserve you for the future. And uh, sometimes we don't understand it. God, I prayed for this. Why did, you, why did you answer me right away? And because of this, and because we are praying for certain things, and we did not get the answer, the, the way we expected, or the answer we want, sometimes we go back and God, dearly beloved, God knows best. God knows best. And he has your, your, your best interest at heart. When these things begin to happen and things are not happening the way you want to see it happen, know what it is to stay consistently in the presence of God. Isaiah said in Isaiah 40, verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait in his presence, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. No, it never said when things are going good, you know. That this is the time to wait upon the Lord. The Bible tells us that they that wait upon the Lord is a constant lifestyle. A constant lifestyle waiting upon him. I like that. They that do what? Wait upon the Lord. Now, why are you waiting? It's because, one, probably you're looking for an answer in something, and you're waiting. So you have to be patient in the presence of God. 
You may be praying for a particular thing and you're not getting the answer. You just need to be patient. Wait upon the Lord. Isaiah writes and say, What they shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and be not what weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So it's important, dearly beloved. When our faith is tested, we become more intimate with God. Not only become more intimate with God, but learn what it is to reflect on past faith actions. Learn what it is to reflect on past faith actions in other past faith success. Look at 1 Samuel. Let me show you something here. 1 Samuel verse 17, 36. It's a story that you all know. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 36. Thy servant, and this is David speaking. Look what David said. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And, uh, and this uncircumcised Philistine, Philistine shall be one of them. Seeing he had defiled the armies of the living God. What was David saying there? David recognized, wait a minute, wait a minute. This Goliath coming before me. I slew a bear and a lion. So who is this uncircumcised Philistines? What is the principle here? David was reflecting on his past success. His past success. And in doing that, he was able to build himself up in faith. In other words, if I could have done that, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Sometimes when your faith is being tested, man, go back into the archives of your faith victory and recall for the enemy the day when you were sick in your body, the day when you lacked financially, the day when there were trouble in your house. Let the enemy know, I prayed and I saw that change, man. Remind him of that. You see, this will help your faith to be built up, looking at past success. So when your faith is being tested, one, Reflect on the promises of God. Stand on the promises of God. Two, know what it is to draw even closer to God. Reflecting on your faith success. The third thing I want to share with you is this. Your faith is being tested. Draw from your God-ordained company. I like that. When your faith is being tested, do not find yourself in no corner all by yourself. Know what it is to draw from your God-ordained company. There's a company ordained of God for you to draw from. Let me say that again. There's a company ordained of God for you to draw from. God, I have a statement here. God expects us to be joined to a local body. Every believer must be connected to a pastoral counseling or be connected to others. One of the worst things that can happen to you, you are going through a trying time in your life as a believer. You're having a rough time. And you take yourself away from your company. Tell you, beloved, God expects you to have a company. A group of people, may not be everybody, a group of people that you can pull from. Acts, Acts chapter 4. Look at the principle here. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. And it's Peter. And, and, and uh, his company. You know what it said in Acts chapter 4, verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. That's Peter. The Bible said, Hey, it is Peter uh, and his company, his friends were being prosecuted. But it came a time when they were let go. But what did they do? Did not withdraw themselves. 
The Bible said they went, Peter uh, uh, and, and the group of them went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. Now, if you continue reading down, you'll realize something. That when they did that, the Bible said that they prayed and the place was filled afresh with the Holy Ghost. In other words, they received more strength to continue along their journey. What am I saying, dearly beloved? When your faith is tested, man, do not withdraw. Do not withdraw and allow the enemy to corner you all by yourself. You like that, you know? For there is strength in unity. There is strength when we come together. Because there, sometimes there is a word just for you for the season. A word to deliver. A brother to encourage you. A sister to encourage you. And when you receive that, you are able to stand strong when your faith is being tested. I have seen believers done it. When their faith is tested, instead of, of coming to a company and receiving strength, they did exactly what the enemy wanted them to do. They withdraw themselves to their own destruction. Look what Ephesians 4, 6 tells us. And this is the body concept. Ephesians 4, 6. Let me read it for you. Ephesians 4, 6. I, I, I would like to read that, that from the, the Bible itself. Ephesians 4, 6. Look what it said here. Ephesians 4, 6. No, sorry. Ephesians 4, 16. Not 4, 6. 4, 16. For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compact by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, what make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself. From whom what the whole body fitly joined together and compact by that which every joint supplied. So when you come together, what you're having, what you're not strong in, a joint in the body supplies you with that and strengthens you. It tells us, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase. In other words, you increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So you, you do not allow the enemy to have his way. But know what it is when your faith is being tested to join yourself to the body which can assist you, man, in being stronger. Our faith, as I conclude, our faith, dearly beloved, as I said opening, will be tested in these times. I want you to understand that. And our faith will be tested in different ways. The way my faith will be tested may not be the way my brother of faith will be tested or my sister of faith will be tested or my other brother of faith will be tested. But the fact remains, as we live daily, our faith will be tested. But we have to understand something. God has put things in place when our faith is being tested that we can be victorious. He has put things in place that even when our faith is tested, that we can be victorious. And as believers, we simply need to apply those principles. So I shared with you, and this is the heart of the message, what do you do when your faith has been tested? I shared with you, number one, stand strong on the promises of God. That's number one. When your faith is being tested, you stand strong 
on the promises of God. Number two, become more intimate with God, reflecting on your past faith actions, in other words, your past experiences. Number three, draw, draw from your God-ordained company. Draw from your God-ordained company. I, I want to encourage you here. I do not know your situation. I do not know what you're going through. But I, I want you to understand that you are not alone. God is there with you. You are not alone. I believe I'm talking to someone. You're feeling that you're all alone, isolated. You're feeling as if your dreams and your aspiration has just gone through the door. And it's as if life has come to a standstill or a stalemate. I want you to know, man, you can revive yourself. God is not true with you. But God can only do what you allow him to do in your life. Do you want a revival in your life? Do you want to see things turn around? Know what it is to continue your trust in God. God wants to do something unique. Let me say again, and I believe I'm speaking to someone. God wants to do something unique in your life. But you have to come out of that mindset as if life is over. I'm just living day by day. Come out of that mindset, man, and recognize today is the day of the Lord, man, and I will be joyous. I will be happy. You remind yourself of that, man. Your day is what you make it. I often tell people that. You decide what type of day you have. Not the enemy, but you decide. This is the day. The Lord has made, I will what? Rejoice and be glad in it. You do not have to be in that slumber, dearly beloved. Understand you have a God or you serve a God who is a lively God, who is able to change every condition, every situation you're in. Nothing is impossible with God. Only believe and trust him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break that yoke. I break that yoke of frustration, of depression, of oppression. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I liberate that man. I liberate that woman. I set their minds free in Jesus' name. Let today be a new day, God. For that individual. Let today be a new day, God, for that individual. In Jesus' precious name. What chance you're listening to me there? You're not saved wherever you are, what part of the world you are, you're listening, you're not saved. I want to encourage you. Give Jesus a chance in your life. Turn your heart over to Jesus Christ. He loves you. He wants to save you. I release now, God, everyone who is listening to me, your healing power, and I curse every affliction, everything that does not contribute to good health. I curse it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Deliverance. Touch that woman. Touch that man. Touch that child in their bodies. I declare it done in Jesus' name. And let the church of Jesus Christ say, amen and amen. God bless you. Did you receive anything there?